we were talking about uh, in resonant uh, circuits that uh, your uh, impedance or your uh, resistivity or whatever you want to call it, uh, which takes the place of ohms, uh, becomes zero, and therefore you're at uh, superconductor conditions at that point. And uh, their Tesla coils are disruptive, and they have other habits which are not enduring. And uh, if you get up into the radio frequency, you've got a device which is not harmful to humans, and you can uh, you can handle it uh, with millions of volts going through it, and you won't uh, have anything happen except maybe the hair on your hand uh, stand up a little bit. And uh, you can also hold light bulbs and light them and that sort of thing. <laughs> And the reason is that radio frequency, the electrons are running around on the outside and they do not penetrate to any depth. And that's uh, uh, one of the reasons for the high efficiency rating. Uh, in the lower frequencies, the electrons are running through the wire and they're bumping into things as they go and uh, they're not uh, functioning very well. They're under unity. Once they get spinning outside the wire, then they're kind of free to do their own thing. And they don't have anything uh, diminishing their effectiveness. Okay? Uh, another way of looking at this uh, would be that if you take a room full of ping pong balls and you get them all going in, uh, you know, many directions, and they're bouncing around, there's a certain amount of energy in that room. But if you line these ping pong balls up, uh, and you can do it uh, magnetically, and uh, then all of a sudden you've got a tremendous amount of energy that was not present before. And this is what resonance is. It's what superconductivity is. And uh, that sort of thing. So, uh, uh, and that's over unity. And, uh, the books won't, uh, won't agree with me on that, I can tell you. Okay? Okay, we're just about to the end of this. And uh, basically, uh, electrical energy is achieved uh, when electron density at a point A becomes greater than electron density at point B. This is your potential difference between two points. And uh, uh, there has to, if that doesn't exist, uh, you don't have any energy, regardless of how, much, how, much, how many electrons are there. It's just like the high pressure and low pressure areas of the weather system. Things are gonna move away from the uh, high pressure area into the low pressure area and uh, the electrons uh, density uh, acts the same way. Okay. Okay, some of the uh, benefits of this particular system are, are some of the points which uh, uh, might be made uh, are the electrons which cycle through this system after being used are returned intact to their former state for future usage. Okay, did we talk about uh, dominoes this afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we did, okay. Okay, and we talked about Ohm's Law, and uh, we also talked about uh, how to recognize uh, over unity. I'll put this back on and let you look at it a little bit more if you want. Uh, let me step out of the way here. You can see where the envelope is set up and where the thing has passed outside the envelope there, and it continues uh, even greater uh, distance outside the envelope as it goes along, and it gets out to a certain point here, and it collapses, and then it comes back and, and starts the whole thing over again. This is a particular resonant circuit that uh, you find depending on how you work your shunt on the resonant circuit. Uh, 
If uh, the first one, uh, there were three of them, if you remember. one at the top is the one which you normally expect to see. That's where your dampening effect happens when you, uh, you're seeing these things on the oscilloscope, on the oscilloscope screen, and it's showing the uh, uh, analog or whatever you want to call it, uh, showing the cycling. And it starts out with a certain amount of energy and that gradually uh, diminishes. The second one there is another setting on that same uh, resonant circuit and uh, with a slightly different adjustment and uh, it shows an envelope of uh, energy uh, very similar to FM a carrier and uh, in FM uh, you have the compression of these uh, cycles uh, which takes the place of uh, the in the analog uh, system where you have a uh, various uh, modulations on it. But uh, and the third one is a particular arrangement of the grounding shunt uh, which means that its ability to communicate with the uh, uh, electron source which would be your grounding and the, the uh, resistance there is like a dam on a large body of water and it uh, lets the electrons uh, through and they get caught behind this dam. Uh, this whole device is like a pump. All it's doing is, uh, like the dominoes we were talking about, is tripping uh, the electrons here and that electrons trip in the next one. And uh, this whole bunch of electrons in all directions are being tripped. And each time one of those is, would be tripped, it gives off a magnetic uh, impulse first and then when it comes back on that infinity loop, it gives off an electrical impulse. And this is, just goes on perpetually. The electron is never diminished in any way. It's giving you light and a lot of other things. And that is also an over-unity device if there ever was one. So uh, if the physics books have a problem with that, so be it. Uh, in the schematic that you showed of the coil that you had on. Yes. Uh, it showed a capacitor connected to ground. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is a blocking well. device. Uh, it, it could either be a resistor or a capacitor or a variable of either one of them. Is that grounding device the source of the negative impedance? Well, see, you've got two coil systems there that are working, so you have to tune one of them to make, you have to have one of the coils with a tunable device on it so the grounding uh, you can stick it in the grounding uh, end of it or you can put it somewhere else but uh, it's convenient to put it into the ground uh, well you mentioned that the source of electrons for you, for the would be coming from the earth right is, is that the the uh, source of the effect that you get in your system Yes, uh, if the electrons are not coming out of the ground they're coming from a, either an air grounding or an earth grounding and say that we've got one turn and uh, on this deal it makes one uh, complete circle here and it uh, has to be uh, grounded in order to uh, pick up uh, the maximum effect of the electrons and in order to ground this thing, see we've got two different coil sets there. Now uh, anytime you add a capacitor or any other device or resistor or anything else into this circuit here, it's going to lower the frequency so the highest it can be will be based on the length of the wire. And then you, if you add something else to it, well then it's going to lower the frequency. Okay, uh, we've got two coils and they may be very slightly out of tune, uh, not precisely tuned. So you need a uh, variable device here which can be a variable uh, blocking device, which can be a variable uh, capacitor, or it can be a variable resistor, or a number of other things. And you, 
uh, you have to do this by experiment and don't put any real uh, heavy resistors in there. I mean, uh, any high resistant deals, put some that uh, say like down below uh, 500 ohms, maybe, a, maybe a, around 100 ohms or something like that. And this is going to be that shunt that's in the resonant circuit that we were talking about a little bit earlier. And it's going to be the dam that's going to hold the water behind it, so to speak. Okay, at that point, we've got uh, 1,000 volts in a radio frequency uh, setup, which is uh, absolutely useless unless we do something else to it. So at this point, uh, uh, it's not an eraser, is it? It is? Okay. Well, it works. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to pick up where we have the one one turn here, and we're going to take it on to the next steps. Uh, uh, we've got one turn here, and we've got it uh, grounded with a variable device on it so that uh, we can fine-tune it. And at that point, uh, we've got, uh, from this deal, we've got an output out here, which is in a uh, an oscillating... Uh, Type, alternating current type uh, situation at radio frequency, yes? One quick little note there. That ground symbol, could that an alternative be the uh, negative of your... Yeah, that, that is the shunt in the uh, uh, ra resonant radio fre frequency uh, uh, configuration that uh, produces a dam that keeps the energy. Uh, it, once it gets to oscillating inside the system, if it... Uh, uh, it can come in, but it can't get out unless it uh, is hooked into another system. I guess what I'm saying is that whatever L1 ground is, or if it be an earth ground or the common, that's what you're referring to. Yeah, well, it's uh, simply a blocking device which uh, uh, keeps your resonant uh, coil system, which uh, normally you have a capacitor and a coil and uh, you've got them uh, like this. Well, in our case, uh, uh, we've uh, put both the capacitor and the coil in one uh, wire. And uh, we've eliminated uh, some components that are subject to fail. When we do that, capacitors are subject to fail, so you've actually made a device which is uh, less likely to fail, has greater longevity. So anyhow, we're gonna be throwing pieces away as we go through here and, and uh, see how we can still end up in uh, business. Okay, uh, we've got a thousand volts here and it's a radio frequency and we need to get it into a condition so that we can run something which is uh, 120 volts at 60 cycles. Oh, yes, sir. Just to clarify, L1 ground and L2 ground are well, they're grounded in different ways. Uh, uh, L1 uh, grounding can be grounded back into the uh, uh, laser module itself, or it can be grounded into the earth or into the same common ground that L, L2 is actually grounded to. You'll notice in the Tesla coil books that uh, uh, frequently the, both those coils are, have the same common ground. Okay, and the next, this uh, double Tesla coil thing here has a... Uh, a variable uh, blocking device on it.